Hello race fans, Lee Craft here. I'm on location for the Monday Morning Racer here at Lime Rock Speedway in Caledonia, New York. So that's just outside of Rochester. It's not too far from Buffalo, kind of situated in between. And you find this gem of a bull ring, one-fifth clay oval dirt track. And the reason I'm interested in this story is because of it expanding instead of closing. So let me take you through it right now. Craft here, the Monday Morning Racer, on location at Lime Rock Speedway, and I'm with the Vice President of the Racing Club, which I'll let him explain a little bit more about that later, Billy Coffey. Billy, man, thank you for joining me today. This is a great story that Lime Rock has going on with a track instead of closing. It is expanding, and that's why I'm here on location this Saturday night to learn more about that. So, first, I've never encountered in racing a racing club. I always hear of a track owner, and they're usually the big monster, and it seems like no one ever gets anything they want and goes forward and the track seems to wind up with a demise. So why don't you tell me a little bit more about a racing club and what it is and how that is beneficial to the competitors and spectators. So basically the racing club is basically if you're a club member, you actually are part of it. You basically can take ownership of it. Um, we have uh, probably roughly 150 to 200 members and uh, ranging from little youngsters that start out in the carts to you know adults to older people that have been uh, you know lifetime members that have earned the status of uh, lifetime membership from just doing duties over time of being belonged to the club. Also, um, that's that's probably one of the biggest things uh, you know um, the funding and everything else that uh, we do. Uh, we you know we work on sponsorships for the club um, you know we have donations from the members um, you know and stuff like that it's similar to like a gun club or a fishing club or anything like that all right great now I'm here because you know you've got this track expanding instead of closing and it's a unique story around the racing world so why don't you tell us about the expansion of the track what all y'all have done and what is in plans to make this track even better than what it is currently Okay, so originally the track was an eighth mile. It was, um, just to give you a little history, uh, the track was asphalt. And uh, in 1986, it was changed to the dirt configuration that it used to be in. And um, it was an eighth mile dirt. And over time, the cars have just outgrown the speedway. Um, you know, the cars have advanced and they've gotten faster and faster and they needed more room and, uh, to be able to race and race competitively and safely. Um, so about June of 2018, the board, um, which I'm one of the board members, we had started talking about the expansion of the track. We wanted to make the track um, longer and wider to make the racing better and safer. So what we actually did was we got our permits in November. We actually started November 10th. Um, we worked all winter long. Uh, every weekend um, and we widened the track um, the back stretch here came out 10 feet and uh, we moved the track 30 feet 35 feet longer and it's a more swoopier turn as well um, our plans are um, at the end of this season we are replacing all the old guardrail and old fencing we're doing that as well because this is all brand new so it's going to be up to current uh, what we have now uh, with the insurance regulations and everything that we had to do, uh, with just with the new codes, we had to go to 12 foot fencing and all this other requirements. Um, it just made, ultimately made the track much safer to race on. Um, you know, there's no risk of cars, you know, getting out of the park, um, you know, anything like that. Keeping spectators, you know, obviously safer. Um, and it makes the racing just, even after one week, it was tremendous last week. Um, you know, we picked up 10 miles an hour on the speeds, you know, the fastest the time I think was around 70 miles an hour, which is cooking. The, tra the track's roughly between a fifth mile and a quarter mile, uh, depending on which lane you're on. So um, that's pretty much what we've done. And I mean, we've done block work, stone work, I mean, all underground power, um, you know, it used to be all over, overhead. 
overhead power. Yeah. Uh, we've upgraded all the power panels um, just for growth and expansion. So, you know, down the road we can do more things. So that's really been, it was a huge project that we took on. I'm really proud of uh, how it turned out. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of members to thank, you know, that stood by my side and, and worked in the 10 degree days and snowing. And, you know, it was just, you know, our upstate New York winters can really be brutal. They times, can be, they you can know, be. So, um, that's really what consisted of the expansion part. Awesome. Now, something else I've noticed that has intrigued me, you have here a small bull ring of a dirt track, and yet they have a title sponsor with their track. You don't find that with a lot of uh, small tracks around the nation. So why don't you tell us about how you got connected with Myers RV Superstores and how they sponsor with the naming rights for the um, It actually, uh, actually, one of the racers here has been a long time. Um, uh, he, he works there. He's been a long time employee of, of Myers, and uh, it was something that uh, was written up and approached uh, Myers if they'd be interested in something like that. And uh, we came to agreement. It was a five-year deal, and uh, we've been really probably blessed with it. Um, uh, I know what uh, we do a good job with it. And Myers seems to be really happy with it, and, and it just helps uh, solidify, you know, what we're doing. Um, we also have um, two main sponsors for each individual classes because you can do that as well. We have the Hyper um, Hyper Racing Evo Injected Wingless 600 class, and that is sponsored by Hyper Racing out of Pennsylvania. And uh, basically, he is donating a frame that's going to be uh, raffled off at the end of the season. Um, but you have to, in order to get tickets, you have to race in the Wingless class, and that's how you earn tickets. Um, and then the other one is uh, Sortino Properties. I hope I pronounced that right. They just signed on last week. And that's for the Wing 600 cars. Okay. And we also have C and Street Archery for the 600 sports class. All right. So that's just some of the sponsors. It's great that a small track has got sponsors helping out from the local community and even from another state, but definitely participating in racing. Now, what type of cars are you running here at Lom Rock? Share that with us. Yeah, uh, we run micro sprints and carts. Um, and we have, uh, basically we have 600 wing, we have 600 wingless, we have a 600 sportsman in the class, we have 270 micros, we have 125 micros, and then we have the quarter midget class, and then we have uh, rookie carts, junior one, junior twos, senior lights, and senior Cedar Lights and Cedar Heavy. Yeah. All right, that's that's a great class of competition with yeah. many different type of uh, vehicles that are race cars. I'm curious though, are there any plans in the future to try to bring any other type of vehicles that are race cars for dirt in? Yeah. Um, not really, um, not at least on a weekly basis. No, absolutely not. It will always be a micro sprint track. Um, we have toyed around with some ideas of possibly having uh, a USAC Midget Show if possible. Whether that ever happens or comes to, I don't know, but that's something that we're building on towards the future that we'd like to do. Great. Hey, anybody out there in USAC watching, get in touch with Billy, get him out here. Now, you've mentioned the competitors, you've mentioned uh, spectators, and all the expansion been done to make better racing. You even said from last week, the opener, that it was better racing. So, with looking toward the future, and you sell it looking into that camera, you tell the competitors and you tell the spectators why they should be at Lime Rock to speak with. Well, basically, um, you know, you'll, you won't find a nice, as nice a facility for the micro sprints um, in New York State. Um, it is very um, competitive and very racy with the new width. Uh, the surface is 50 feet wide. Um, uh, the clay that we have on it is good stuff. I mean, it's uh, when it's wet, it's very tacky and uh, it's very easy on tires. And you're not going to find, as a, from a spectator point of view, um, you can't even go to the movies for eight dollars. You know, and that's what we charge. General admission is eight dollars. I think seniors is five dollars. It's cheap entertainment that you can come out um, and, and see a great race on a Saturday, any given Saturday night, bring your entire family. And, uh, 
it's really you know, relatively cheaply compared to you know, movies or anything like that. And to see some great racing. Out here in upstate New York, just outside of Rochester, I'm from Hamlin, so it's about an hour south of Hamlin. You're not too far from Buffalo. You're not too far from Rochester. You're not too far from parts in the southern tier. And this is a great place to come and see some great racing action here at Lime Rock Speedway. Also, he didn't mention it, but I think they have a great concession stand, and I hope to bring you in the future from the ladies over there in the concession stand their menu options. It's one of the best menus I've seen at a racetrack. Billy, look, thank you for your time, and I hope Lime Rock has got some limelight years ahead for racing in this region. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hey, folks, Monday Morning Racer here, and I stopped by the concession stands, which, as you can tell, I often stop at at a racetrack. And one of the reasons why I wanted to showcase the concession stand is at Lime Rock, they have one of the best ones I've seen, especially for the size of track that it is. They've really prided themselves on putting out some good food and having a great menu option. And I'm here with Rhonda, and Rhonda's in charge of the whole process. And Rhonda, why don't you tell us about the concession stand, how long you've been doing it, and what are some goals that you have for this concession stand for the fans and the competitors here at Lime Rock? Well, um, this is my second year doing the concession stand. We've done a lot of updates over the winter, uh, as they did with the track. We, we did some updates in, in the stand. We uh, added some cabinetry, we painted. Um, we last year started out with a pretty large menu. Um, we also had a rock plate, which was our version of a garbage plate. Um, I haven't added that back to the menu yet this year, um, but that is something that we will be offering. Um, we just we try to just make sure we have the food that people would want while they're here watching a great race. So that's like pretzels, nachos, the hamburger, the cheeseburger. Now, what she's talking about with a rock plate, mentioning garbage plate, for those of you around the nation that don't know what she's talking about, it's basically something like hot potatoes have been fried, and then you've got mac salad topped with a meat hot sauce, and a choice of your meat all combined together that you eat. And I've had plenty of them since I've been in upstate New York for the last five years. So what is the number one item that sells on Saturday night? Oh, you can't beat a good cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. And I'm sure here in the cooler times of New York, that's coffee and hot chocolate goes yes, great. Yes, yes. We've been doing a lot of coffee and hot chocolate. The beginning of the season and the end of the season. So look, when you come to Lime Rock Speedway, you've got to come see Rhonda and get some great food here at the, at the concession stand. At the track shack. The track shack. They got it going on. <laughs> and I got Tony, stopped him from apparently repairing a shock and getting ready to go for one of tonight's heat races before the feature. Tony, look, I've been walking around the pits and I see a lot of guys with a whole lot more hair than you've got. Tell us, how old are you and how long you've been racing? Yeah, I'm 63 uh, right now. I'm going to turn 64 in a few months. Awesome. I've been racing for uh, off and on for uh, 25 years or so. You Has know. most of that 25 years been at Lime Rock or has it been uh, at other facilities? Well, I, the majority of my racing has been at Lime Rock. I've done a few other uh, places, other tracks, but I've always come back to Lime Rock. It's, uh, it's a real nice competitive track. Uh, it's a family or, oriented, which is, uh, which is great. You know? It's all about the younger kids and uh, you know, it's all about that. So, you've been coming here for a long time. You're used to, obviously, that many years, the way the track was configured, and over the winter you had yes. all the expansions. Tell me, from your perspective, racing it for so long, how different is the track? Oh, definitely. I, you know what? I, I, Billy Coffee and the gang, I tell you, uh, they, really, uh, they really got the bull by the horns here, and they really did a great job on the track, uh, widening it, make it a little longer. Uh, the clay is awesome. It's been tacky. Um, you know, it, they've been doing great. I mean... To me, uh, obviously, we got to get used to it again, doing more different lines and stuff like that. But uh, I'm enjoying myself. It's only the second week out here. I'm doing some adjustments and stuff. But uh, you know, I'll I'll be up there. Good. You got a beautiful sprint car. Thank you. Uh, tell us quickly a little story of why going almost fully white. Well, you know what? I wanted to be different. You know, and uh, and my hair was turning white, so I figured I might as well go. <laughs> I don't know, just a white car, it's sharp, it's clean, uh, at nighttime you can see it a lot better, and uh, I've always had a white car. 
Tony, look, we hope you do well tonight. Thank you. And thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Lee Craft here, Monday Morning Racer, again, location in the pits at Lime Rock Speedway. And I got Dave Farner with me. And I know Dave personally. He's a, bit of a, he's a huge racer, works on these things. He's been in this class now for a couple of years. Dave, tell me, I know you've done karting and now you're in, in the micro sprints. Why the change? Why the switch? Well, the speed is uh, it's huge, huge difference. It's more challenging. There's uh, not to take anything away from the karting community, but the uh, level of skill and the level of competition just here at Lime Rock is above and beyond the national level. Uh, we got guys here that are younger than us and we got uh, uh, younger than 15, can't even drive on the road kicking our butts. So. <laughs> All right. It makes us better every time. All so. right, great. Now, Dave, look, I know what you do for a living personally, but for people that are off in the stands, they think like every racer out here is like loaded with a bun bunch of money. <laughs> uh, tell folks, yeah. what do you do week in, week out to allow you to stay out here? Well, sponsors help. <laughs> sponsors help. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, we do a lot of side work um, for, for cars. We're, I'm a mechanic at Wegmans, and uh, we do a lot of, a lot of car repairs on the side and a lot of things that we uh, pick up here and there just to make a couple extra bucks just to get here on Saturday night. All right. Now, this track has gone through a major expansion mm -hmm. from the opening week, which was last week, to now. As a driver, what were the biggest changes? What made you in the seat go, wow, that was different from what I'm used to? Well, so the track is longer and wider, but we're almost running the same lap times, and the speed is higher, way higher. Uh, the upgrade in the wall and the fence just makes you feel so much safer, too. Um, we still got a little bit more work to do, but we're going to make it perfect at the end of the season. All right, Nick, I know you want to get out there, get some hot laps in, figure out what the track is going to do for you, and, and hopefully go out and win a feature tonight. Tell me, Great. give me three reasons why a fellow competitor should come to Lime Rock. Uh, just the, the, the amount of work that we put in here, it's going to be a premier track in New York, just plain and simple. Uh, the level of competition, whether you're running wing or wingless, is so high that you, you, you have nowhere else that has this kind of competition skill level uh, to race against. Uh, and third, I mean, <laughs> we, we pay the highest in New York to win. So, uh, you know, any 12 or more cars is 300 to win. Uh, 20 or more cars is 500 to win. So, uh, and we got a huge wingless shootout at the end of the year, so you got to practice for that because it's 2,000 to win that. So. All right, Dave, hope you have a great night. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And he at Lime Rock here races the 600 winged and wingless. And between the two classes last year, he had 21 feature wins, and he's a track champion in both the classes. So Nick, tell us what's what is it with these cars? Why these cars in upstate New York, the wingless sprints and the wing sprint? Well, we did a lot of asphalt racing, but. I, my brother got into one of these and they looked a lot of fun, so I asked my dad if I could get one and we tested it, it seemed fun and fast, so now four or five years later we're here racing our hometown racetrack at Lime Rock, but we do go down to PA occasionally. All right, great. So Nick, you know, 21 wins last year, you're the track champion and you're looking at this year, do you think you're gonna repeat? You, is there anyone out there that you think can seriously compete with you, or are you, you top dog everyone's chasing? Well, if you ask me, I say I'm chasing everybody else. That's always the goal. But uh, yeah, some some people around you ask, like, they're chasing us, but everyone here is fast. And it could go any, anyway. All right, so we are in week two from the uh, opening week here at Lime Rock. Uh, was that the, from what the track was to what it is now with the track expansion, what's the differences? What were the challenges? What, as you as a driver, made you go, wow, that was different? Uh, it's definitely a lot different entering the corners. And lengthening and widening in only 30 feet both ways, it's, it adds a lot of corner speed and 
trying to learn a new line and everything, it's definitely challenging. All right, Nick, give me three reasons why, as a competitor, you should come to Lime Rock Speedway. Three reasons? It's a great community here, racetrack is fast, and there's always good racing. All right, Nick, thank you for your time. We hope you win tonight. So here at Lime Rock, you've got a lot of different classes competing from carts to wingless sprints to the winged variety. And at this point, what I want to do is just give you a quick walkthrough of the pits. Excuse me for it being shaky, the camera, but a walkthrough of the pits so you can see uh, who's out here competing, their cars or sponsors, things of that nature. Great field tonight in many different classes from the carts to the sprints winged and wingless variety and some drivers do compete in both they'll put the wing on take the wheel off and race this is a good looking sprint the two t's here i was told that this 110 he's a sportsman racer now some of these drivers are a part of the racing club and if you're part of the club here, you are allowed into the points. Others are not. They're traveling in. Blum Brothers Custom. Good looking sprint. Got the red and white version. Brooklyn's Speed Shop. So they are 600 micro sprints from what I understand. I have seen these cars run before and they are a great racing venue to come watch. They are a spectacular type of sprints. Thoroughly enjoy watching them. We should have a great field tonight. So we got Precision Lawn and Garden Equipment out of Webster, New York. To get into the pits here, anyone can. If you are a member of the club, it's $20. If you are not a member of the club, it's only $25. So if you want to get the experience of walking the pits and interacting with the drivers, it's only 25 bucks. Now for a person attending the race, it's only eight bucks to actually attend. So it's a great place to come and get into some racing action in upstate New York. So at this point, I'm going to turn back around. There is another row to catch. We got Stollard chassis and components. Good field for tonight in upstate New York. Really out in the middle of nowhere. So where is this track? It is in Caledonia, New York. Barely in Caledonia. Right out of the community of Lime Rock. You're about 90 minutes away from Buffalo. I'd say 45 minutes from Rochester, and you can use I-90 to get here fairly easy. So we'll continue on this last row here. We got HRE, Harshman Racing Engines, there in the number 62. Boone and Sons in the 95 there. Monday morning racer and I'm here with little Jack and Jack is the two-time track champion here at Lime Rock in carts. Jack look tell me what do you like about karting so much? Um, I, I just like uh, the competitiveness of the sport. I mean I love sport. That's my favorite thing to do and um, you know mostly I like dirt and I like drifting. All right so this track here at Lime Rock has changed from two years previously that you've won. Now it's been expanded. After the opening weekend, what do you think about the track? What's so different about it? Um, well, they expanded the track, and I think it'll be a little faster because um, shorter, the shorter track makes it a uh, little, little, the carter a little slower, but then with the big track, it makes it like a lot faster. All right. Why do you like running here at Lime Rock? Um, like I said before, I like drifting at dirt and 
I mean, I've never been to another dirt track. I mean, I live in Warsaw, which is a good 25, 30 minutes away from here. Um, but this is probably the closest dirt track, and the other dirt track, I've, the other track I raced at is Bliss, and that is over. Um, about 45 minutes away from here. All right, great. So, Jack, what do you think your chances are tonight? Well, got it done last week. I'm hoping, I'm, I'm really hoping we can get it done tonight, too. All right, awesome, man. Look, last question. Where do you hope you will get in racing? I don't know. If, if all goes well, I got big plans for NASCAR. All right. But if... If I don't do that well, I'll probably do another sport. All right, guys, look. Look out for Jack Frazier, two-time track champion here at Lime Rock in the future. Monday morning racer, and we are with Caden. We're with Caden, and she's a kart racer out here at Lime Rock Speedway. Caden, look. <laughs> tell me, why karting? She's speechless, folks. I actually folks. don't even know why I got into it. Don't even know I why just, she got into I've it. I've been around racing my whole life. Because her micro's not ready. Yeah, my micro's not ready. So. Oh, so you're in, you also got a micro sprint. Yes, I do. All right, so you're in the cars because your micro's not ready, but you want to get in one of the bigger cars. Yeah, I do. Definitely. How old are you? I'll be 15 in July. All right, 15 in July, out here racing, been around racing all your life. Do you hope racing goes further for you? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Where? 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 I don't really know, just wherever I can get. Wherever you can get, whether it's still the local night scene or, or even something higher? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, I know I just talked to the two-time track champion here recently. Uh, what do you think your chances are uh, this year in uh, knocking anyone off and taking the top yeah. spot? Well, I actually have for, what, two years in a row, I think? And I'm hoping I can do it again this year. Okay, great, great. Running in different classes and throughout? I haven't run through any different classes. I did my rookie year. I ran through three classes, I think, but this year I'm only sticking to the senior light class. All right. Let me ask you this. Now, I know ladies can be very competitive amongst each other. So is there like a race within the race of all the other lady competitors out here of who's going to be the top gal? Not really. Not really? Pretty good, com pretty good competitive uh, group? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, good. Well, one last question. Tell me. Why do you enjoy racing at Lime Rock over any other facility? Well, it's really my home track. I've been coming here for almost 15 years. And I just, my family raced. Like, my dad raced for me, my uncles. I still have family that races. And my cousin and my sister got into it. But I guess I just really love staying here because I've met so many people here that I just feel really comfortable and it's a great environment to be in. Awesome. Thank you. All right, folks, Lee Craft here with Irene Fink, and she is the flag lady here at Lime Rock Myers RV Social Speedway, and I'm sure she's got many other roles, and I'm going to let her explain that, but Irene, you said earlier that you've been doing the flag starting dropping for off and on 20 years. Tell me, what's it been like to be a flag person at a racetrack? Well, it's pretty exciting, and I have the best view in the whole place. I get to see exactly what's going on before everybody else sees it. It's, it's the best view. Now, one of the old, old starters with NASCAR, he had a box of everything that had hit him over the years. <laughs> what have you been hit with, I'm, I'm curious, over the years? Oh my goodness, uh, pieces of carts, rocks, um, various shrapnel, stones, big chunks of clay here when the track is really clack, really, really um, tacky. I get big chunks of clay stuck in my hair. It's good times. I, I'm sure for a lady that's, that's frustrating, yeah. definitely. <laughs> now, with being a starter and you've got that great view, you're also well, sometimes exposed more than anyone else. Has there been a moment in the 20 years that you were scared, that you were like, wow, that was close? Oh, sure. Our flag stand wasn't always over there. It used to be in front of the um, in front of the garage over here, and it was lower, and it was more open. And there were times we backpedaled a good 10 feet to get 
get away from the car that was hitting the fence. So yeah. All right. Now, I have been watching short track, short track racing across the nation, whether it's asphalt back in the southeast, dirt here in the northeast. I haven't got a Midwest yet, but I plan to get in, getting out there to the Knoxville Nationals. And you always see sometimes some frustration from the starters in the flag stand. So, two competitors, what would you like for them to do that would help you out? Oh my goodness. Listen in your ears. Dennis is telling you, well at least at our track, our race director is telling you what you need to know. And pay attention to the flags. We're here to help you. For those that don't know, give a brief overview of what the flags colors are and they mean. Alright, so you got the green flag, which is obviously it means go. You have yellow, which is caution. You gotta slow down. There's something going on out there. Red means stop. Um, there's something serious going on out there. It might be somebody flipped on their lid. It might be an unsafe condition, like maybe some oil on the track whatever. Um, there's a checkered flag, which is the end of the race. I've got this blue flag with a yellow line. It means hold your line. The leaders are approaching. So I show that to lap cars. If the leader is coming up behind them, it just means, you know, the leader's coming. Don't race the leader, but you don't have to pull off. Just hold your line. Um, oh, and I got, a, I got a black flag, obviously. If that's rolled up and I'm pointing it at you, I'm warning you. If it's flying, you need to leave. And if it's the black flag with the orange circle in the middle, that means there's a mechanical problem and you're being black flagged from the racetrack. The blue flag with a yellow stripe, probably the most ignored flag in yes. all of motorsports. Absolutely. Irene, look, thank you for your time and I hope you, you have a great night in the flag stand. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for coming. at Lime Rock Speedway by yours truly, the Monday Morning Racer. Let me tell you, there is some great racing action that happens at Lime Rock Speedway. That feature later on in the night, the last feature of the night, the wingless 600 sprints, you could have thrown a blanket over the top three cars in a 13 car field on that little track. And the racing action was such that the second place guy was trying to go to the outside, the third place guy was diving to the inside, the third place guy figuring out that's not going to work and trying the outside of the outside guy on the inside guy. It was great racing throughout the 25 lap feature. So if you're near Lime Rock Speedway, I recommend highly go check it out. $8 to get you into the grandstands. If you're not a member of the track, it's just $25 bucks for the pit pass and the pit experience. It is a great venue to catch some great dirt track racing. But I want you to understand, I did not want to showcase the racing as much as the people. As great as a spectacle racing is, the fact of the matter is, the people behind the racing, whether it's the race car or the race track, they make racing the great spectacle that it is. If it wasn't for them, the volunteers, the racer themselves, you and I as fans, motorsports enthusiasts, we would not see the great spectacle that is racing, and in particular, dirt track racing at such a place as Lime Rock in Caledonia, New York. So, you will eventually see live action from Lime Rock Speedway as I, the Monday Morning Racer, will bring it occasionally on Saturday nights when I'm available. But, as you already know, this channel is not just about dirt track racing or drag racing or NASCAR or NHRA. But if it's motorsports, I want to take a crack at it. we got some great things coming up, such as airport drag racing, not planes, but going old school with drag cars at an airport strip, more dirt track racing, more NHRA interviews, hopefully, and maybe, just maybe, a journey of me getting back in the driver's seat if someone wants to help me out. 
So, like this video, subscribe to the Monday Morning Racer, and until next time, I'm Lee Craft, and to you, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.